Discover how large organizations can innovate in today's session with Nick J. Welcome to Awakened Titans podcast with Lily Patrascu. Mind-blowing conversations with influential business titans sharing how you can manifest abundance, love, joy, success through quantum awakening, quantum manifestation, quantum healing, quantum miracles, exponential business growth, and innovative products and services. Nick Jane is the CEO of Ideascale, the world's largest innovation software as a service company. Ideascale helps large, complex organizations like Pfizer, the US Postal Service, Doctors Without Borders, innovate faster, better, and more systemically. An evangelist for Gen AI, Nick championed the use of large language models at Ideascale well before the AI hype cycle began. Outside of work, Nick enjoys poker, running, listening to battle rap, and traveling. And he graduated at the top of his class from Harvard Business School and has led companies in radically different industries, including trucking, men's fashion, and software. The first question is, what's the secret to your success? Percy, thank you for the kind intro. Um, look, I... Uh... I think it's just hard work, right? I'm a big believer that I want to make a difference in the world and I work my butt off to try and accomplish that in every sphere of life, whether that be my personal life or my professional life. Thank you. Tell us about how you came about doing innovation, helping organizations to innovate on a large scale. Sure. So I think it's two different things. One is throughout my career, one of the things I've always been confused by or frustrated by is um, when I was working at large organizations, people's ideas didn't matter that much unless you were a very senior. And it always surprised me because there were great ideas coming from people all around the organization, people in the satellite offices, junior people, and those ideas just were never heard. That was number one. There was this really uh, this deep opportunity I sensed that ideas should matter. And then the second reason is like I got a really cool call a few years ago from somebody I'd met. And he said, hey, there's this innovation software company that's looking for their next CEO. Would you be interested? And that was obviously a tremendous career opportunity for me. I'm reasonably young. And when somebody gives you a call to be the CEO of a, soft, a, success, a successful software company, it's hard to say no. And so it was like a perfect storm of like, this is a really cool job opportunity for me professionally. But then also it's something I personally care a lot about. Thank you. Tell us more about what Ideascale can do. And how did that lead to some of your biggest achievements helping large organizations to create innovation in their company? Sure. So Ideascale does a bunch of different things, but what we really made our name on is I think we are the best in class software at helping large organizations collect ideas from their entire ecosystem. So that could be their employees, their customers, enthusiasts about their product, collect all of those ideas, good and bad, figure out which ones are good and which ones are bad, and then move those from just being ideas to turning them into reality. And this could be product features, new mascots, snacks in the kitchen, uh, which technologies they want to use. We have customers in all sorts of industries. So that's what our software is really good at. Um, we, In fact, it's so good, we actually use it in-house to figure out what how we're developing our software, or what our recent mascot uh, was. Um, without getting to specific clients, I think our software has really made a difference because so many large organizations struggle with the same problem. They're all wondering, how do we become more innovative? And they want to do so, but they don't, uh, they're don't. they struggling to do so because they're not tapping into their existing talent pools. And our software really helps them do that much more systematically and consistently. Thank you. Tell, tell us about your uh, work with Amway or other companies where you have achieved a really great things in terms of innovation? Sure. So I can't, again, I can't, I have to be a little bit uh, ambiguous because I can't speak to specific client situations. I don't look at their data. It's their private data. But um, I would say there's kind of two interesting cases I'll give. Number one is there was a, uh, a one of the uh, most well-known fast food companies in the world. It's probably someplace you've eaten in the past two weeks. I certainly eat there all the time. And they needed new menu ideas for what their new fast food menu item should be. And they said, look, our great celebrity chefs in-house have run out of ideas. Let's go talk to our hundreds of millions of you know, customers who have eat at our restaurants every week. And so they asked customers for ideas on what their new menu item should be. And customers 
hearts poured out with thousands of ideas, some good, some bad. And this company actually found a couple of the best ones and turned them into menu ideas. And that's a real practical use of tapping into your broader ecosystem, crowdsourcing great ideas, and also letting the crowd figure out which ideas are good and which ideas are less good. Thank you. Tell us about another case study that um, where you have used idea scale and innovation in another large company and what impact has it had on that company? Sure. So I'll give an example from uh, some of the large government agencies we work with. We are the, the largest provider of innovation software to the, the U.S. federal government agency. So places like the U.S. Post Office, a Transportation Safety Authority, they're the guys in the blue shirts when you fly in and go through airports. Uh, Coast Guard. So for a lot of these organizations, one of their challenges is, for a lot of these government organizations, one of their challenges is how do they engage their employees, right? It's tough being a government employee because you often don't get the same level of fame or recognition. You have to deal with a lot more bureaucracy. So a lot of these agencies struggle with engaging their employees and retaining their employees. Our software has really helped them uh, do two things, obviously capture great ideas, but also reinvigorate and energize their workforce because now their workforce, all these you know hundreds of thousands or millions of government employees are increasingly being valued because their employer, the, these government agencies are listening to their ideas, which makes people feel a lot more heard and a lot more valued. Thank you. Tell me a third case study as well of a large Ooh. company you've worked with and the impact it's had on it. Sure. So um, we were working with a uh, an Asian bank, uh, one of the largest uh, banks in the uh, kind of Southeast Asian com- uh, countries. Um, and what they were struggling for was ideas on how they could save costs. Banking is a really tough business. They wanted to save costs without cutting people. And that's sometimes a really difficult challenge because the easiest way a lot of organizations cut costs is they just fire people. But it turns out there's lots of other ways for an organization to become more efficient that doesn't require reducing jobs. And for this specific organization, they want, they had a very strong culture of not firing people and being much more a human organization. So our software helped them get ideas from their entire employee base on how they could reduce costs without resorting to layoffs or other sort of human uh, cost-cutting endeavors. Thank you. I love how you're able to help the organizations, the large organizations, to kind of compile everyone's creativity, innovation, ideas, strategy in so many different ways. Can you tell us more about how your um, innovation tool can help large companies to thrive through innovation? Sure. So let's start with why innovation matters. I think there's both, you know, good side and a bad side. Number one is, uh, or not, or, uh, let's say a, a glass half full, glass half empty way of looking at innovation. The glass half full way is innovation's fun. It's exciting. It's cool to build something new or do something new tomorrow than we did yesterday. It's like trying a new meal rather than eating at the same restaurant every day. It's fun. That's the good side of innovation. The glass half empty uh, way of looking at innovation is, look, if you're not innovating, your competitors are. Right. If you're not doing something cool and better and new every day, remember that your competitors are and they're out there to you know eat your business, win your customers. So you need to get better at whatever you do in life, whether you're a real estate agent or a you know multi-billion dollar technology company. We're seeing the fight over AI where everybody needs to be more innovative because if Google is not more innovative, a, Ch- a chat GPT or Microsoft will eat their lunch. Um, so our software it helps people who realize that innovation is very critical for their organization's mission to be uh, over time by um, making it a lot more systematic to achieve innovation rather than innovation being a random genius idea here and there, which is how a lot of people think about innovation. It becomes more of a process that you can tap into and repeat. And that's really important. You want to be able to repeat whatever you're doing over and over and over again. Thank you. Is there anything that small businesses can leverage from your idea so they can implement idea scale in their small business? Or is this just for really large businesses? Sure. So our software is completely free for organizations less than 100 people. So if you're an individual or, you know, 99 people, you can go to our uh, website, ideascale.com and sign up totally free and you can use it. It can be your personal scratch pad for your own random ideas in life as an individual or a solo entrepreneur, or if you're a smaller, mid-sized organization up to 100 people. So you could, we'd love if you use our software, we intentionally make it free because we want to make an impact and we want this sort of powerful technology to be accessible to the average person or the smaller organization. 
Uh, our software is certainly, you know, our customers tend to be large organizations because they're the ones who are, you know, less nimble. It's very easy as a 20 person startup to innovate quickly because that's what you're starting. That's why you started a business. You wanted to innovate. Our software is really targeted uh, or our customer base is really focused on the large organizations that find it difficult to innovate because they're, they've been around 100 years. And they may have been doing the same thing for the last 100 years. Thank you. Tell us more about how it works. Let's say um, I'm a large organization and I want to hire you. How does it work? Sure. So we're a software as a service company. So you basically pay us for our software and you get to use the software for a year, three years, five years. What the software does is it takes two minutes to set up, which is great. It sits on the cloud. You can access it just like you do your Gmail. And it does two things really well. It does a bunch of things, but two things really well. Number one, you can have everyone in your organization or ecosystem join the software and submit ideas. Almost think of it like TikTok posts or Facebook posts or LinkedIn posts. Instead of a social media post, it's an idea. So instead of a funny dancing video, it's an idea for how that your organization can get better. And that could be a specific idea on cost cutting, new product, fun snacks in the kitchen, mascots, whatever theme you want. That's number one. You can collect all the ideas from your disp- from all L- um, uh, nodes of your ecosystem. And then secondly, it helps you figure out which ideas are good or bad. And that's because it leverages the power of the crowd or what's called prediction markets for ideas to be upvoted and downvoted, liked and disliked, commented, iterated on. Again, very much like a social media uh, platform where certain posts will go viral because a lot of people love it. That's what our software does for ideas. Wow, sounds really awesome. So um, I gathered that you've already helped uh, so many companies with an impact to potentially millions of people. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, so we've been around about 15 years. I think we have somewhere between four-ish million, or I think we have around 4 million active users of our software when you add up you know, both the individual entrepreneurs using our software as well as these mega corporations and mega government agencies who have hundreds of thousands of employees using our software. Thank you. Can I ask, how did you come up with this idea? And um, was it a long journey to get there? Sure. So I'm not the founder of IdeaScale. IdeaScale was founded 15 years ago, and I've only had the pleasure of being here two years. But the origin story is there's these two guys, uh, Viv Paskaran and Rob Hohen, who realized about 15 years ago that all these large organizations really wanted to be innovative, And yet they didn't know how other than rely on the random genius. And you can't rely on somebody having a genius idea in order to be it because that doesn't happen every day. Right. So Rob and Viv realized that there was this opportunity for organizations to want it to be systematically innovative and software. One of the things software of any type does, and this can be social media software, CRM software, accounting software, is it allows you to systematize something that can be done better within your organization or personal life. Thank you. Tell us more about your personal um, journey and your achievements that kind of led you to be part of this amazing innovation. Sure. So I think there's a few things. Number one, I'm really passionate about the power of ideas. I really believe that good ideas should win regardless of whether they're coming from the CEO, the janitor, somebody who doesn't speak English, somebody who may not be part of the power ecosystem within an organization or culture. I really believe in the power of ideas. And that's something wonderful that I get to feel good about every day working at IdeaScale, that I'm pushing forward the power of ideas, not the power of hierarchy or someone's title or what they look like. Um, The second, as I mentioned, is kind of a professional reason. Like I've always wanted to run grow, and grow a company. I like the idea that I'm creating jobs for people and value for my customers. So IdeaScale was this perfect confluence of situations where I believe in the product, I believe in the mission where we are making ideas matter and bringing to life an idea meritocracy. And it's profe- it aligns very well with my professional career goals where I wanted to be CEO of a, lo- of a company as well as grow it and create an impact on society, my employees, and my customers. Thank you. What are large organizations typically using as a replacement of this of idea scale? Sure. So, you know, the funny thing is most of our competition tends to be either paper post-it notes or Excel. The analogy I like to draw is 30 years ago before Salesforce and HubSpot came along, the way people kept their customer data was on something called Rolodexes. I don't know if any of your listeners are old enough to know what a Rolodex is. It's basically a spinning thing where you stick in business cards, right? And somewhere around 30 years ago, people realized that's a terrible way to keep contacts, your contacts for uh, your sales and marketing. They created software systems called CRMs, Customer Relationship Management Systems. We are basically doing that, or have been doing that for about 15 years now, 
to ideas. Because right now, when somebody has a great idea, what do they do? They write it on a, po a yellow post-it note, they stick it in their cube or office, or they email their boss, or they may stick it in an Excel spreadsheet or Google form. That's not a good way of doing it at scale. That's good if you're a five-person company or you're, you know, you really only work with a couple of people. That's not good if you're building a hundred thousand person organization or a five thousand person organization, because you're not emailing if you're in a five thousand person company, you're not emailing your great idea to the CEO. He or she probably doesn't want you to email them because they can't handle that amount of email volume. Thank you. What are companies missing out on by not having idea scale? I think they're missing out on two things. Number one is they're missing great ideas from those outside the CEO's ecosystem. The CEO is probably only interacting with five, 10, 20 people on a regular basis, but in a hundred thousand person organization, there's 999, sorry, there's 99,980 people who the CEO is not interacting with on a daily basis. That's number one. You're missing the great ideas from a broader array of people. Number two is you are letting, uh, Number two is you're not letting the best ideas rise to the top. If you're only letting a couple ideas happen, and it's often the ideas of the senior people or whoever's the loudest extrovert in the room, you're not letting ideas speak for themselves. And I think our software does that really, really powerfully because it helps create an idea meritocracy where the best ideas win and the best ideas become reality. Thank you. Which companies do you feel would benefit the the most out of uh, idea scale that you would love to work with? Sure. So look, any large organization should be using our software or something like our software. Obviously, I hope it's my software, not my competitors, but I think every large organization would benefit from some sort of innovation management software. Um, a couple organizations that I would love to have as customers are um, I would love to have more of the U.S. armed forces agencies. I think the U.S. is in a really cool and you know situation in the world where we need to continue to innovate, especially as our geopolitical situation becomes a little bit more complex with foreign adversaries. Um, and number two is I would love to work with more automobile companies. I think America has done a really good job, not just America, but I think like automobile companies are ripe for a lot of innovation. They could all innovate faster because they are being upended by self-driving cars or by the Teslas of the world. And the traditional auto industry can be more innovative. And I would love to be helping them become more innovative every day. Thank you. If there was a question that I haven't asked, but you would love to just answer it, what would it be? Um, I uh, would say, you know, what's the scariest thing about innovation? Um <laughs> What's the scary? Sure. So we, you know, we've talked about all the great things about innovation. It makes your company, your employees happier, and it helps you innovate. Makes more money. Your organization. Becomes, there's all these great things about innovation. The scary thing about innovation is that it inherently requires risk. The risk of failure. When you're doing the, when you, you know, if you know how to uh, do the, you know how to drive a car on the right hand side of the road, and you're moved to a country and you have to drive it on the left hand side, that's scary the first time, right? Doing something different, changing is scary. And it requires some acceptance of risk and failure. And so that's something that's, again, very natural for a human being to be a little bit afraid. And it's very natural for an organization to be a, a, a little bit afraid of innovation and change. But that's also kind of a cool experience because you get to do something new once you come through that little bit of fear and uncertainty. Follow us for more interviews with world's most influential business titans, providing you with the insights to awaken to your full potential, so you can get paid to be yourself, find true happiness, and manifest anything you desire.